we kind of start a little easy and then we get farther. However, uh, due to this category, it may be a little tough trotting the whole way through. But no matter what, it'll be a little bit extra educational. So we're off and running with the first one. This structure is a Neolithic chambered carn and it's a passage grave located on an island off the coast of Scotland. It is one of the best preserved burial sites of the kind in Europe, and it's aligned with the setting sun on the winter solstice. This ancient site was built around 2800 BCE, showcasing the advanced engineering skills of its builders. So that's way back in time. Who knows where this is? Anybody know? Anybody know? <laughs> it is part of a larger UNESCO World Heritage Site known as the Heart of the Neolithic Orkney. That's a clue. Which includes other famous landmarks. Vikings broke into this tomb in the 12th century. And they left their own graffiti making it one of the most significant collections of Norse inscriptions outside of Scandinavia. So does anybody know the answer to this one? We're looking for the name of the place, the location, and again, uh, the dates, if you remember what I said. Well, anyway, this is a place called Maze Howe, and it's in Orkney, Scotland, and it was around 2800 BCE. So moving on, that one was a little abstract, for sure. <laughs> They'll get a little more defined as we go. Here we go. This site was the largest and most complex archaeological site north of pre-Columbian Mexico. It is located near the Mississippi River and includes over 100 earthen mounds. Hmm. Earthen mounds. At its height, the city had a population larger than many European cities of the same era. Hmm. The centerpiece of the site, the massive Monk's Mound, which was the largest man-made structure in pre-Columbian North America, this site is often considered the pinnacle of the Mississippian culture, a sophisticated Native American civilization. Who knows the name of this? No, the Mayans were further south. It's not Mayan, but good guess. It was around the same time as the, the Mayans, actually. This is around 600 to 1400. Um, almost the same as Anasazi, probably a little little before, say, Anasazi, maybe. Um, anyway, what do you think? Or as Anasazi you like to be called now, ancestral pabulans. <laughs> this is Cahokia Mound. Cahokia Mound. It's in, actually in Illinois. A hokey amount. Learn something every day. It's a large North American culture. All right, we're going to get into ones that are a little more familiar to most of you. This Roman aqueduct bridge is located in the south of France and is known for its architectural elegance. We're looking for either the name of the object or the, the location uh, and the age, if I haven't told you already. It stands at 160 feet high. Its construction features three tiers of arches and uses no mortar to hold the stones together. Today, it is one of France's most visited ancient monuments and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now, many of these, most of these places are UNESCO sites. Anybody know? Anybody know where this is or what this is? It's in France. It's Roman. In France, it's Roman. What is it? First of all, I told you what it was. It's a aqueduct, right? Who knows? Who knows what this is? This is called the Pont du Gard. Pont du Gard. Did I say that right? Pont du Gard in Nîmes, France. You don't say the S, right? Nîmes, France. No S. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to be a little hard tonight, but just think of the educational value. The Pont du Gard is an a, a enduring symbol of Roman engineering. Okay, next up. Ooh, I thought they were hard so far. 
This mosque is a masterpiece of Sudano Sahelian architecture. That's mud bricks, just so you know. It's made prim primarily of mud brick. It is located in a town that was once a major center of commerce and Islamic learning in West Africa. The current structure was rebuilt in 1907. Huh, interesting. After the original fell into disrepair. Anybody know? Each year, the local community comes together to replaster the mosque to preserve its structure. This mosque is the largest mud brick building in the world. <laughs> Bell check. <laughs> yes. This is called the Great Mosque of Janene. Janene. I'm sorry, Jene, and it's in Mali. And it was built in the 13th century. How about that? And once again, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, of course. Mud brick. That's the place right there. So this one's a little different. Uh, I show a second uh, different angle uh, when we get to the end there. Okay, you might know this one. This sprawling palace fortress complex sits on a hill overlooking the city of Granada. It was built by the Nasrid dynasty and represents one of the finest examples of Moorish architecture. Moorish. The palace's intricate stucco work, water features, and courtyards are renowned for their beauty. It remained the royal residence until the Ron uh, Reconquista, Reconquista, Reform, uh, what was that? The, the, the place where they uh, burned everybody at the stake. Ferdinand and Isabella took the city. <laughs> its name means the red one, referring to the reddish hue of the walls. Oh, there you go. You guys do know this one. Very good. Jan and Mary Jo both have it. The Alhambra is a major symbol of rich cultural historic of Islamic Spain and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site visited by millions each year. The Alhambra. You guys got that one. Very good. I think you're going to start doing better. They get more and more familiar. They kind of move around and they move forward in age we'll see <laughs> next up i think you'll know this iconic gothic cathedral is situated on an island in the middle of the seine river in paris it was one of the first buildings to use flying buttresses at an innovative structural feature Ooh, it's kind of hard to tell what it is so far, though. <laughs> Robots need to catch up. Its twin towers and magnificent stained glass windows include the famous rose window are globally recognized. There you go. Jan's got it. Jan's got it. It was the site of Napoleon's coronation as emperor in 1804. Did you know that? A devastating fire in 2019 caused severe damage, uh, though restoration efforts are currently underway. There it is. And yes, you guys got this one. This is indeed Notre Dame. Notre Dame is not only a spiritual landmark, but also a symbol of French resilience, as evidenced by ongoing efforts to restore it to its formal glory. Former glory. It is Notre Dame. <laughs> that crow repaired it. Yeah. He's a, he's a saint. <laughs> Next up, you're going to know this one. This is an ancient Incan city. And it is located high in the Andes Mountains, around 8,000 feet above sea level. It was unknown to the outside world until its rediscovery by an American explorer named Hiram Bingham in 1911. 
The city is famous for its precise stone masonry, where stones fit together so perfectly that no mortar is required. <laughs> That's correct, although, once again, we do need a spelling check. Machu. Machu Picchu. Machu. <laughs> you guys all know it. That's good. It was built as an estate for an Incan emperor. This site is one of the most visited in South America and is often called the Lost City of the Incas. That is. Pretty place. I, that's, that's one place maybe I'd still like to go sometime. Although, I hear it's a bit of a hike. <laughs> Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, remains a marvel of Incan engineering and a testament to their sophisticated civilization, drawing visitors from all over the globe. But again, this was only 15th century CE, so really recent. Fairly recent. Hey, I bet you guys know this one. This royal residence was transformed into a Renaissance masterpiece by French kings, starting with Francis I. It has served as a residence for many French monarchs, including Napoleon, who declared it his true home. The chateau is known for its lavish interiors and grand forested surrounding. Who knows who this is? Or where this is? Excuse me. <laughs> it was the site of Napoleon's abdication in 1814 before his first exile to Elba. The Chateau is one of the largest and most opulent royal residences in France, second only to Versailles. Not Merlago. <laughs> there you guys is it? Are you Googling? Are you Googling? <laughs> you better Google. If you didn't watch my video, you better be Googling. If you watched my video and don't remember any of these, I don't know what to say. This is the Chateau de Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau. It blends Renaissance and classical French architectural styles. Has a rich history tied to the French monarchy. You're going to know this one. Next up, this prehistoric monument consists of massive standing stones arranged in a circular layout. The stones are aligned with the movements of the sun, especially during the summer and winter solstices. David Brody, I remember David Brody, sure. He was a design teacher at uh, Cal Poly Architecture School. Not an architectural history teacher. Those were the architectural history teacher's names. Anybody remember? <laughs> Little side project for, for, cause this one's too easy, right? The iconic site is one of the most recognizable and mysterious landmarks in the world. Stonehenge is a UNESCO World Heritage Site with ongoing research uncovering more about its construction and purpose. Who knows the age? What was the age of Stonehenge? Anybody know? Did I say it? I don't think I said it. What's the age? This is, they don't know for sure, but it's between two and 3,000 year BC. 3,000 BC. There's a good picture of it, right? All right, you may know this next one. This fairy tale castle is perched on a rugged hill in the Bavarian Alps. It was commissioned by King Ludwig II of Bavaria, also known as the Mad King. Its whimsical design was inspired by operas composed by Richard Wagner. Wagner. Can you tell what it is? Yes. Yeah. 
It was intended as a private retreat for the king, but was never fully completed. This castle is inspired has inspired Disney Sleeping Beauty's castle as one of the most photographed castles in the world. Who knows the name of this place? Anybody know? A little tricky to say, but you only have to type it. You don't have to say it. It's probably harder to type than it is to say. This is the New Schwanstein Castle. The New Schwanstein Castle is a testament to Ludwig II's extravagant vision. Combining romantic medieval architecture with modern 19th century comforts. That's Palami. All right, let's see if you can get the next one. This religious structure is one of the oldest extent, extent Islamic buildings in the world. It sits atop a platform known as the Temple Mount, a sacred site to three major religions. The iconic Golden Dome is visible from many points throughout Jerusalem. New Schwanstein. New Schwanstein. Yeah. Or something close to that. New Schwanstein. <laughs> Who knows what this is? This shrine was built under the order of Umayyad Caliph Abba al Malik. That's a mouthful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, this is meant to be more architectural, right? This is an architect's jacket. This is a brown corduroy, tan corduroy, and a white mock, mock neck, right? Do I got it? Do I got it down? I think so. This is the Dome of the Rock. It is not only a religious symbol, but also a masterpiece of Islamic architecture representing centuries of spiritual significance. I do need a pipe. A pipe would be perfect. Pipe would be perfect. Although that would be one more thing to deal with because when you do these lives, there's a lot of things to deal with. A lot of buttons and things to move around. <laughs> Alright, next up. You might know this one. This temple is the largest Buddhist temple in the world and is constructed entirely of stone. It is shaped like a mandala. I don't know what a mandala is, but it's shaped like one and represents a symbolic journey from the earthly realm to enlightenment. The structure is composed of nine stacked platforms topped by a central dome. It was recovered, uh, rediscovered in the 19th century after centuries of being hidden by volcanic ash and the jungle. That would do it. The temple is adorned with over 2,500 relief panels and more than 500 Buddha statues. And lots of things that I know they call them stupids. Lots of stupids. <laughs> who knows what this one is? Who, who needs another hint? It is located in Java. Java, Indian, Indonesia. It was built in the 9th century, but not super old. Who knows? This is Borobudur. Borobudur Temple. Yeah, Borobudur. Say that three times fast. All right, next up. This is a highly overrated, uh, according to Jan. <laughs> This vast palace complex was home to Chinese emperors for nearly 500 years. It is the largest collection of preserved ancient wooden structures in the world. Well, that's something. The complex consists of nearly 1,000 buildings covering 180 acres and is highly overrated. <laughs> the kilometers were historically forbidden to enter, hence its name. Oh, you were, you were typing it to Brad. 
that's funny. It is located in the heart of Beijing and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Who knows the name of this place? What's, what's it go by? It's in China. Something City. There you go. The citizens got. Yes, indeed. This is the Forbidden City. It is a symbol of Imperial China, reflecting the grandeur and isolation of the Chinese emperors who once ruled from within its walls. <laughs> Forbidden City. All right. We're warming up. Now, I think you guys might know this one. I don't know. Maybe this is the one you thought was overrated. This Japanese castle is often referred to as the White Heron Castle due to its striking white exterior. It is one of Japan's most famous and well-preserved castles having survived quakes, fires, and World War II bombings. Who knows the answer? The castle is an excellent example of traditional Japanese architecture and was designed to withstand sieges. Wow, cool. It consists of a complex maze of paths that make it difficult for enemies to navigate. Confusing once they get in there. They get lost. Once again, this UNESCO World Heritage Site is considered a national treasure of Japan. Anybody know the answer to this one? It is a castle. I don't believe it's it has anything to do with Otani, however. And White Castle's good. White Castle's excellent answer in this case. I think you can get a burger on the tour. <laughs> this is Hemiji. Hemeji. Hemeji Castle. Its graceful beauty and defensive design make it an outstanding example of Japanese feudal architecture. Next up. You may know this one. This medieval abbey sits on a small rocky island off the coast of Normandy. The island becomes inaccessible during a high tide, which adds to its mystique and defensible advantage, I'd say so. Who knows? Who knows this one? The Abbey's spire and Gothic architecture have made it one of France's most iconic landmarks. Its magical setting inspired scenes in Disney's Tangled movie. Now, I don't, I don't think I ever saw Tangled. I think that was between kids and grandkids, Tangle. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> Who knows where this is? It was originally a strategic fortification before becoming a renowned place of pilgrimage. There you go. Susan, Susan, I think, has it. In France, that is true. This is Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel's blend of natural beauty and historic architecture has earned it a place as one of France's most beloved and visited sites. All right, we're moving on. We're jumping back across the world. This golden stupa is the most sacred Buddhist site in Miramar. It is said to contain relics of four past Buddhas, including strands of the Buddha's hair. <laughs> okay. The pagoda's golden exterior is covered in gold leaf, and its spire is adorned with thousands of diamonds and precious stones. Wow, that sounds cool. That is. Anybody know what it's called? At 326 feet tall, it dominates the Yangon skyline. Yangon. You guys all been to Yangon? And it can be seen for many miles. 
The exact origins of this site are debated, but it has been an important religious site for over a thousand years. Anybody know what this one's called? This, is, this has an interesting name. This is called the Sway Doggone. Sway, Sway Doggone. Sway. Sway Doggone Pagoda continues to serve as a place of pilgrimage for Buddhists worldwide. Next up. I bet you don't know this one. <laughs> We're going to do another one of these Neolithic temples. These temples are among the oldest freestanding structures in the world. Whoa. 3600 BCE. How about that? They consist of several complexes, including Gigantic, Tariksen, and Hagerkin. I don't know where they get those names. Which were used for religious purposes. The temples were featured uh, massive stone slabs. Intricately carved altars and mysterious spiral motifs. Their exact function remains a subject of speculation, though they are believed to have been centers for worship or ritual. Anybody know where this place is? I like some of these. Some of these Neolithic sites are pretty cool, though, right? The island of Malta was home to a highly advanced prehistorical culture. The left behind these impressive structures. Yeah, so supposedly some volcano or something destroyed the civilization in Malta. Sounds sketchy. This is the Neolithic temples of Malta. That's their name, I guess. And 3600 BCE. How about that? Wow. There they are. Old. Old. All right, let's try another really hard name to pronounce, Mosque. This ought to be easy to get, right? <laughs> this mosque is one of the oldest and most prestigious centers of Islamic learning in the world. Now, it is a fairly famous building. It was founded during the Fatimid Caliphate, soon after the establishment of Cairo as the capital of Egypt. The mosque, so it's in Cairo, I believe. The mosque's associated university became a leading center for Islamic scholarship and still operates today. So that was one of the things the Muslim religion was known for, right? They had the whole system of universities early, early, early on. Education. Its name, meaning the most resplendent, is believed to be a reference to Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. Schism, schism, Mar-a-Lago. Looks a little bit like Mar-a-Lago. This is Al-Azhar Mosque. Al-Azhar Mosque. <laughs> and it's in Cairo, Egypt. And it was all the way back at 970. 970. So when was Muhammad? Like 500? Somewhere between five and six hundred CE, and this place was nine seventy CE. So there you go. Now you learned more every day on Quick Bite History Live. Now you should know this one. It's been subject of many of my videos. This ancient city is famous for its rock-cut architecture and water conduit system. It was the capital of Nabatoan Kingdom the Nabataeans, and was a major trading hub in the ancient world. Trading hub. The site's most famous structure is al Kazani. al -Kazne, Kazne. that's better, al Kazne. also known as the Treasury, which was featured in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Anybody remember this one? This has been in a bunch of my videos. This is a cool place, would be a cool place to visit too. The city was forgotten by Western world until its rediscovery in the early 19th century. Who knows the name? It's called the Rose, there you go, Brad. Way to come through. This is the Rose City due to its color of stone. Petra, Petra is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the new seven wonders of the world. 
attracting tourists and archaeologists alike. Now, I didn't know there was a new Seven Wonders of the World. Did you guys know that? Hmm. I don't know what the new Seven Wonders are. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to have to do a video about that. <laughs> All right, I bet you know this one. Here we go. This iconic dome was designed by Filippo Brunelleschi. Filippo Brunelleschi, a key figure of Italian Renaissance. It was the largest dome in the world when it was completed, and it remains the largest brick dome ever constructed. All out of bricks. The innovative engineering techniques used to build it were revolutionary at the time. I bet. Stack one brick on another and try to get it to go all the way over like a dome? Not the Sistine Chapel. It is in Florence. It is in Florence. And I guess that is part of the one of the names of it, right? The dome's construction required no traditional wood scaffolding. A groundbreaking achievement. It is part of the larger Florence Cathedral. The dome is part of the larger Florence Cathedral, which dominates the skyline in Florence. It, this is known as a couple different names. Brunelleschi's Dome, Florence Cathedral Dome, and it's also known as Il Duomo. Il Duomo. How about that? 1420 to 1436 CE. There you go. Florence. Fairly famous building, right? That's the idea. We got 50 famous buildings. This is one of them. There you go. Now, this one's a little offbeat. I had forgotten all about this. I, I think I did learn this in architectural history in college. However, I had forgotten about it. This monumental altar was constructed in honor of Zeus, the king of the Greek gods. It was built in the ancient city of Pergamon. Pergamon, excuse me, Pergamon. Located in the modern day Turkey, it's in Turkey. The altar's massive frieze, you all know what a frieze is, depicts the Gigantomachy. Gigantomachy. <laughs> you know what that was? The mythical battle between the gods and the giants. So the frieze is like the big placard, it's like a, bill, a billboard, right? The structure was partially reconstructed in Pergamon Museum in Berlin. So this is actually inside of a museum and they rebuilt the whole, from the real pieces, they real, real, rebuilt the whole thing inside the uh, museum in Berlin. The altar is considered one of the greatest surviving examples of Hellenistic art and architecture. There you go. The altar of Zeus, reflecting the influence of the Greek mythology and the power of the ancient city-state. The ancient city-state. There was the freeze. All right. Um, you should know this next one. I know the next one. The Russian Orthodox Cathedral is famous for its vibrant colors and onion-shaped dome. It was commissioned by Ivan the Terrible to commemorate his victory over Kazan Khanate, the Kazan Khanate. So the Kazan Khanate was like a leftover from the Mongols, right? The city of Kazan, is, or the state of Kazan, I guess, in Russia is still a big thing. The cathedral's unique design features nine separate chapels arranged around a central nave. Legend has it that Ivan had the architect blinded so he could never build anything so beautiful again. So here's one of those stories where they, they kill the architect afterwards. <laughs> this one they just blinded him. Nice. It stands in Red Square and is one of Russia's most recognizable landmarks. St. Basil's. St. Basil's. St. Basil's Cathedral is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and remains a symbol of Russia's cultural and architectural history. And nobody got it. Basilica Kremlin is a clever answer. I mean, that's, that's inventive for sure. 
Uh, maybe it's even called that somewhere. All right, here you go. Now, this is an interesting one. These remarkable churches are carved directly out of rock. They're set deep into the earth. So they just started digging a hole. These are 11 monolithic churches in total, connected by tunnels and passageways. They were built under the reign of King Lalibela. King Lalibela, and it had intended as a new, uh, new Jerusalem. He meant this to be like the New Jerusalem. How about that? The most famous of these churches is Bete Georgis. Bete Georgis, shaped like a cross and carved entirely from a single block of stone. These churches are still used for worship and are a pilgrimage site for Ethiopian Orthodox Christians. I guess that's a big thing. <laughs> Ethiopian Orthodox Christians, I guess. So there you go. Anyway, yeah, these are carved entirely from rocks. And then even the inside, they carve it all out. Interesting, huh? Yeah, a bit challenging. The Lalibela churches are a marvel of medieval, medieval engineering and a testament to Ethiopia's deep-rooted Christian heritage. There you go. That's pretty cool looking, huh? There you go. All right. All right. Let's get them a little more local to this area. This ancient Mesoamerican city is home to the Pyramids of the Sun and the moon. At its peak, it was one of the largest cities in the world, with an estimated population of over 100,000 people. The Avenue of the Dead runs through the city, flanked by temples and pyramids. Who knows this one? I don't know if it's the best picture of it, but... The city's origins and identity of its builders remain a mystery, though it influenced the later Aztec civilization. So the Aztecs took this over. Interesting. Who knows? Uh, oh, hey, you know that name. That's good. What? What's a coddle? Isn't that the bird god? What's a coddle? The bird bird god. But what's the name of the city? Who knows? It's, I like to say it too. It's Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most visited archeo archeological sites in Mexico. Its impressive scale and enduring mystery continue to captivate archeologists and tourists alike. There it is, Teotihuacan. <laughs> I had to practice that part that. All right, you should know the next one. This Roman temple is renowned for its massive dome and central oculus, which allows light to pour into the interior. It is one of the best preserved buildings from ancient Rome. The inscription on the front credits Marcus Agrippa with its construction. So it was later rebuilt by Emperor Hadrian of Hadrian Wall fame. <laughs> there you go. Didn't got it. This building was converted into a Christian church in the 7th century, which helped preserve it. The Pantheon. The Pantheon's dome was the largest in the world for over a thousand years. It remains the largest unreinforced concrete dome ever built. Hmm. The Pantheon stands as a lasting symbol of Roman engineering and architectural brilliance with its design influencing buildings for centuries. Pantheon. There you go. Big dome. That'd be cool to see. There it is. Pantheon. <laughs> Okay, next one's kind of interesting. Oh, well, you know what this means? I have to load the next video file because we got halfway. We're halfway. Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> we made it halfway. 
<laughs> so that means we're on number 25. And this is an interesting one. This basilica, designed by architect Antonio Gaudí, is one of the most famous buildings in Spain, despite it not being finished yet. Its design is a mix of Gothic and Art Nouveau. So if you can picture that, with highly detailed facades depicting biblical scenes. Hey, Stuart, I just noticed you were here. Good to see you. Sounds like you know your stuff. <laughs> Who knows the name of this place? The construction of this monumental church has spanned over a century, with completion projected for the 2030s. Kind of like the California bullet train, right? Gaudi devoted the last years of life to this project, and he is buried in the crypt beneath the building. That's kind of creepy. Its towering spires and intricate designs have made it one of Barcelona's most iconic landmarks. Barcelona. This is called the Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia continues to draw millions of visitors every year and is a symbol of Gaudi's visionary na nature-inspired architectural style. La 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 la. Heading back south again, this ancient Mayan city is home to the massive step pyramid known as El Castillo. Temple of Kukala. 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 Not, uh, what was Brad's name? Quetzalcoatl. This is not Quetzalcoatl. This is Kukulkan. Kukulkan. <laughs> the pyramid is aligned with the equinox. The city was a major economic, political, and religious hub for the Mayan civilization. Who knows where this is? What's the biggest Mayan city? Other notable features include the Great Ball Court where a ritual ball game was played. And it was one, it, and this is one of the new seven wonders of the world. There's one of the new seven wonders again. And a popular tourist destination. <laughs> Ooh, who hoo <laughs> Who knows where this is? To Mexico, the middle of Yucatan. This was an option on my cruise cruise trip over there near Cozumel. This was an option. I didn't take this option. I went to the one by the coast. Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza's architectural astro astronomical achievements reflect the advanced knowledge and cultural sophistication of the Mayan civilization. Da da da. This one, next one's pretty interesting. Yes. Chichen Itza. <laughs> This palace sits atop a hill in Lhasa, overlooking the Tibetan capital. It served as the winter residence of the Dalai Lama. The palace is divided into two parts, the White Palace, which served as the administrative center, and the Red Palace, which is dedicated to religious study and prayer. At 13 stories high, it is one of the most imposing and significant structures in Tibetan Buddhism. Who knows the name of this place? I gave you the location. It's Lhasa, Tibet. I can give you the date, too. It's 1649 CE. Or AD, as we like to say. This palace is a museum and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Let me know the name of this one. You ready for me to give it to you, I take it? Going once, going twice. This is the Potala Palace. Potala Palace. It remains a symbol of Tibetan culture and religion, representing both its historical and spiritual importance. There you go. Now, I know how much you guys like the Middle East mosques. 
so we'll go we'll do another one <laughs> they're getting a little bigger though this mosque is considered one of the finest achievements in ottoman architecture it was designed by the renowned ottoman architect mimar sinan never heard of him <laughs> sorry mimar sinan at the height of his career the mosque features four towering minarets, each over 80 meters tall. Its massive central dome with a diameter of 31 meters was an architectural marvel at the time. Anybody know? Yeah, minarets, 80 meters. This mosque is located in the city of Edirne. Edirne, 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 sorry. Edirne, and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, of course. Anybody know the name? Going once, going twice. This is the Selim Inaye. Selim Inaye. Selim Inaye. Selim Inaye. Selim Inaye. Of course. Selim Inaye Mosque in Turkey. <laughs> there you go. We got it. I should have pr practiced that pronunciation. <laughs> Famous architect. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Europe. Now, this is this might be a little tricky. This Renaissance palace is located within the grounds of the Alhambra. So we did the Alhambra earlier, and this is within the Alhambra. It was commissioned by Holy Roman Emperor Charles V but was never completed during his lifetime. The building is famous for its circular courtyard, a rare design feature for the period. Doesn't look like it has a circular courtyard in this angle. <laughs> it was intended to reflect Charles V's imperial power and influence over Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. Although it contrasts with the Moorish architecture of the Alhambra, the palace is an important example of Spanish Renaissance style. Hmm. So yeah, Spain was interesting, right? Because we kept having the Muslims, the Moors come take back over the whole country, then go away and then come back and then go away and then come back. A lot of religion in Spain, oh my gosh. Then they did the whole uh, Spanish Civil War. Anyway, I digress. The Palace of Charles V is a striking architectural contrast to the surroundings and a reminder of Spain's imperial ambitions. Right, you probably know this one. This basilica is one of the largest churches in the world and is located in the heart of the Vatican. I bet you know this one. Its magnificent dome was designed by Michelangelo. Michelangelo. Though several architects did contribute. It stands on the site where St. Peter, one of the apostles of Jesus, is believed to be buried. The basilica's interior is adorned with masterpieces such as Michelangelo's Pieta and Bernini's Baldacin. It is the primary place of worship for the Pope and the spiritual center of the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, this is Pete's place. Exactly. This is Pete's. <laughs> yes, indeed, this is St. Peter's Basilica, Vatican City. Anybody know when it was built? First, our original? Anybody know? Anybody know? Well, it took a long time. It took over 100 years. There's a clue. 1506 to 1626. Hey, not bad. 16, 1615, good guess. Not bad. There it is. St. Pete's. Next up. Let's go to Egypt. Why not? This temple complex is one of the largest religious structures over ever built. Sorry. Dedicated to the god Amun-Ra. Amun-Ra. Now that's a god. 
It was constructed over a period of more than 1,500 years by a succession of pharaohs. They just kept building this one. Its great hypostyle hall is renowned for its massive columns, which are covered in intricate hieroglyphs. Yeah, now there's tons of photographs of this place, and I would love to go to this place. This is like top of the list, I would say. <laughs> I don't know if this is uh, known as the necropolis. I don't, I don't, I don't believe so, but it, the necropolis could have been part of this. The site includes obelisks, sanctuaries, and a sacred lake. The sacred lake, all showcasing the grandeur of ancient Egyptian religious practices. Going once, going twice, this is the Temple of Karnak. Temple of Karnak is in Luxor, Egypt, 2000 BCE, all the way to 100 CE. There it is. There's that hypo style we talked about. Cool, huh? Yeah. There you go, Stuart. You got it. You got it. Okay, next up, probably know this. Let's go back to Europe. This grand palace was originally a hunting lodge for King Louis the uh, 13th before being transformed into a royal residence by his son, Louis XIV. Amazing how that works. Its hall of mirrors with its stunning chandeliers and reflective surfaces is one of the most famous rooms in the world. Who knows the answer to this? The Palace Gardens, designed by André Lanotre, covered nearly 2,000 acres and included fountains, statues, and ornamental lakes. The Treaty of Blank, which ended World War I, was signed here in 1919. Yes. Well spelled, Jim. Stuart's got it. <laughs> The Palace of Versailles reflects the opulence and power of the French monarchy and continues to fascinate visitors from around the globe. Palace of Versailles. Anybody know the date? I guess dates. 50 years. 1661 to 1710. There's the Hall of Mirrors. Hall of Mirrors. Something tells me you can get this one. This iconic bell tower is famous for its unintended tilt, which began during construction due to unstable soil. It stands in the Square of Miracles alongside Pisa's Cathedral. Efforts to stabilize the tower have been ongoing for centuries, including a major restoration in the 1990s. Yes, indeed, this is Little Caesars. <laughs> the tower leans at an angle of about what? How many degrees do you think it leans? Who's got the answer to that? Who knows how many degrees this tower leans? It remains one of the most photographed landmarks in Italy, attracting millions of tourists each year. How many degrees? Anybody know? No, it's not that much. <laughs> Leading, ta Leading Tower Pizza's unique tilt of only four degrees has made it an enduring symbol of architectural curiosity and perseverance. <laughs> it's still standing, so I guess that's perseverance. 15, 16, good guess, but it's only four. It's only four degrees. I know. Seems like more. <laughs> All right, I think you might know this one. This ancient citadel, citadel, key clue, is perched on a rocky outcrop overlooking the city of Athens. It includes several famous structures, and that's another key clue, several famous structures, the most notable being in the Parthenon. It was the religious and political heart of ancient Athens, symbolizing the power and culture of the classical era. 
Who knows where this is? The Parthenon was dedicated to Athena, the patron goddess of the city. The blank is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most significant landmarks in ancient Greece. Everybody's getting it. Stuart Pride it is the Acropolis. The Acropolis remains a symbol of ancient Greek civilization and its contribution to art, philosophy, and democracy. <laughs> the Acropolis. A threat to democracy. You guys early voting? Everybody early voting? Or no? Stay on. There it is. The Acropolis. All right, we're getting down. We've only got a very few left. We've got 15 left. I know, you can make it. You can make it. This iconic building serves as the meeting place for United Kingdom's Parliament. It is home to the famous Big Ben Clock Tower, now officially called the Elizabeth Tower. Who knows what this is? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. They, they send out 10 to all Democrats in California. Uh, there you go. It sits on the north bank of the river Thames. Is that the way you say that? Thames or Thames? And is one of London's most recognizable landmarks. House of Commons and the House of Lords both meet here, making it the heart of British political life. Jan's got it. Stewart's got it. The Palace of Westminster. The Palace of Westminster is a symbol of the British Parliament system and historic evolution of democracy in the UK. So yes, we're getting very political now. Because we all know that the UK is a bastion of democracy and free speech. <laughs> all right, let's get away from politics. Travel to an island in the South Seas. These massive stone figures are found on a remote Pacific island known for their oversized heads and mysterious origins. The statues were carved from volcanic tuff and transported across the island. Though how this was achieved remains debated. Although, I've heard how they did it. Have you guys heard how they, they move these things? So we can we can go into it. But the way they supposedly move these things is they and they there's legends of this, right? They the legends are that the statues walked walked themselves to their locations, and I guess what they did is they stood them up and they had ropes on them and they would rock them back and forth, and so they actually would walk to their location all the way across the island. How about that? How about that? Did you know that? You learn something every day on Quick Bite History Live. The Maui, Maui, Mau, Maui, sorry, Maui statues continue to intrigue researchers and travelers representing the ingenuity and spiritual traditions of the Rapa Nui civilization on Easter Island. Country of Chile, Chile, Chile. Rapa Nui. And they walk. <laughs> All right, let's go back. To, let's go back to France. This grand French Renaissance chateau was originally built as a hunting lodge for King Francis the First. It features a distinctive double helix staircase, thought to have been inspired by designs from Leonardo. The chateau's architecture is a blend of medieval defense features and Renaissance aesthetics. With over 400 rooms and 80 staircases, it is one of the largest chateaus in Lower Valley. Anybody know where this one is? Anybody seen this before? 
Its iconic roof line is adorned with numerous towers and chimneys, making it a stunning visual landmark. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, there you go, Stuart. You got it. Chateau de Chambord. Sounds like a wine. I think it is a wine. Chateau de Chambord is a symbol of French Renaissance architecture and remains a popular tourist destination in France's lower valley. I'm probably not saying that properly. Chateau de Chambord. Chambord of uh, champagne, perhaps? Hmm, I don't know. Raspberry liqueur. There you go. Well, I know you guys have been missing the moths. So let's do a moss. This moss also known as the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, I'll give you the name up front, is renowned for its stunning blue tiled interior, because it's known as something else. It was built during the reign of Sultan Ahmed I and stands opposite the Hagia Sophia. So it's, you know, the Hagia Sophia is famous. Well, this one's across from it in the city of Istanbul or used to be Constantinople, right? Who knows? Anybody know the name of this, what this goes by? It's nickname, I guess we'd say. It is still a functional mosque. It is also one of Istanbul's most uh, visited tourist attractions. Its courtyard is the largest of the Ottoman mosques and the dome rises over 140 feet. Who knows the name of this one? Nope. This is known as the Blue Mosque. The Blue Mosque is a masterpiece of Ottoman architecture, blending grandeur with artistic detail and remains a focal point of Istanbul's skyline. Istanbul. Arena still listing? She's the one that's been to Istanbul the most lately, twice this year. <laughs> there you go. Next up, this museum is the largest art museum in the world and is housed in a former royal palace. Anybody know? It is home to the famous works such as the Mona Lisa and the Venus de Milo. The museum's iconic glass pyramid was designed by architect I.M. Pei. I am <laughs> It was originally built as a fortress under King Philip II before becoming a royal residence and then a public museum. With over 380,000 pieces in its collection, it attracts millions of visitors each year. Yes, everybody knows this one. It's kind of a cool picture. It's got the glass pyramid in the front there and the old museum in the back. I've never been there, but most of you guys have. <laughs> the Louvre is not only a treasure trove of art and history, but also a symbol of French culture and global artistic heritage. The Louvre. Okay, top 10. Can your hearts handle it? We are on the top 10. This ancient palace is associated with the legendary labyrinth of King Minos and the myth of the Minotaur. Crazy. It was the ceremonial and political center of the Minoan civilization. I think this is the guys that confused. These, these are the guys that got wiped out by the volcano, right? I'm pretty sure. Volcano and earthquake and tidal wave and whole thing was bad. <laughs> the palace is famous for its intricate layout, hence the labyrinth, and colorful frescoes, an advanced plumbing system. It had plumbing. We're talking 1700 BCE. It's located on the island of Crete. It is one of the most significant archaeological sites in the Aegean. Anybody know the name of this place? 
It is bright. It kind of looks like IHOP. A little bit. Oh, it pancaked. Yeah, true. <laughs> Pretty cool looking, to be honest. Anybody know the name of this place? We did study this in architectural history. This is the Palace of Kenosis, or Gnosis, depending on how you pronounce that. Kenosis. So there you go. Next up, Palace of Kenosis. Okay, we're back in France. Famous place. This Gothic cathedral is renowned for its stunning stained glass windows which have been remarkably well-preserved. I don't know. Can you believe the windows are still there? <laughs> How'd that happen? It is one of the finest examples of French high Gothic architecture with its towering spires and elaborate sculptures. The cathedral's labyrinth on the floor of the nave was once used for religious contemplation. That sounds interesting. Brad, Brad, Brad got it early. This one is not Notre Dame. We did Notre Dame earlier, I believe, didn't we? It has as a famous relic, the Sancta Camisia, said to be the tunic worn by the Virgin Mary. The cathedral is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, of course. Anybody remember besides Brad? Yes, this is Chartres. Chartres. You pronounce it like that? Chartres? Chartres Cathedral. Or just Chartres. 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 <laughs> Cathedral of Chartres. 1194 to 1220 CE. So early on, they were building these flying buttresses. How about that, huh? All right. Speaking of Istanbul. This building has served as a cathedral, a mosque, a museum over its long history. It's been everything. It was originally built as a Christian cathedral under the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I. There was a key guy in history. We're going to do a video on him, no doubt. Its massive dome, which seemed to defy engineering limits, was the largest in the world for centuries. The building was converted into a mosque after the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople in 1453. This is the place. This is the... So we've seen a bunch of places in Istanbul, but this is the biggie. This is the big one. Anybody remember the name of this? It was recently converted back into a mosque in 2020, but it does remain open to visitors. Anybody got the, the name down on this? It was originally built in 537 CE, so very early, just kind of, you know, after the fall of the Roman Empire. This is the Hagia Sophia, right? Hagia Sophia is a symbol of architectural achievements, both Byzantine and Ottoman empires. There you go, down to number seven. This massive amphitheater is one of the most iconic landmarks of ancient Rome. It could hold up to 50,000 spectators who gathered to watch gladiatorial contests, public spectacles, and mock sea battles. The structure is made of concrete stone with a complex system of vaults supporting its tiers. Despite being partially ruined by earthquakes and stone robbers, stone robbers, yeah, it remains an enduring symbol of the Roman Empire. Hey, how's it going? It's good. This is this is Mar a Lago on the, November sixth. That's right. This is the Colosseum. Anybody remember the other name for this place? The name, the name when it was built. When it was built, what was this called? It wasn't called the Colosseum. Anybody know? What was it called? It was the name for like 200 years before they changed the name. 
This is the Flavian Amphitheater. Flavian Amphitheater is the actual name. And then it was changed to the Coliseum later on. All right, you'll know this place. Pretty famous. This is the largest and oldest of the three pyramids located at the Giza Plateau near Cairo. <laughs> I think you have the whole answer right there. It was built as a tomb for the Pharaoh of Khafu and originally stood at 146 meters. Of course, everybody argues whether it was really built as the tomb for Khafu or that was just a, they decided to do that or whatever. It's a power plant, of course. It is constructed from over 2 million limestone blocks, each weighing several tons. The pyramid is the last surviving wonder of the original Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. So it's in the old Seven Wonders and it's in the new Seven Wonders. How about that? <laughs> That's right. This is, what's the official name? This, the official name is the Great Pyramid of Giza. That's right. The Great Pyramid of Giza uh, remains a symbol of ancient Egyptian engineering and has long fascinated historians, archaeologists, and tourists alike. That's right. The Great Pyramid of Giza. That was number six. Usually that would be like number one on this, right? <laughs> Been devoted. Okay, let's see if you can get this one. This massive temple complex was originally built as a Hindu temple and dedicated to the god Vishnu. It is the largest religious monument in the world, covering over 400 acres. The temple's five towers are meant to represent Mount Meru, the center of the universe in Hindu and Buddhist cosmology. Didn't know that. It was later converted into a Buddhist temple and remains an important pilgrim site. Who knows the name of this? <laughs> it's a Buddhist place. It's in Cambodia. Cambodia. This is go known as going once, going twice. This is Angkor Wat. Ang Angkor Wat. Majestic beauty and spiritual significance make it one of the world's most important architectural and cultural landmarks. Angkor Wat. There you have it. We're down to the four top. Architectural Wonders of the World. Weighing in at number four, this ancient temple sits atop the Acro Acropolis and is dedicated to the goddess Athena. It was constructed during the Golden Age of Athens under the leadership of Pericles. Pericles, the old, that old rascal. The building is renowned for its Doric columns and the precision of its architectural proportion. Over the centuries, it has served as a church, a mosque, and even a munitions depot. <laughs> so that explains what happened to the roof, right? <laughs> the Israelis bombed it. <laughs> it's political again. <laughs> That's right. Stuart has it. <laughs> I told you what it was earlier. The Parthenon is one of the most recognized symbols of ancient Greece and Western civilization. It continues to be a symbol of ancient Greek culture, philosophy, and democracy. <laughs> no doubt. Admired for its beauty and historical impact. We're down to the top three. Who can name the top three now without any pictures? What haven't you seen? You've seen everything. 
This iron lattice tower was designed by engineer Gustav and was initially criticized for its radical design. It was constructed as an entrance arch for the 1889 World's Fair held to celebrate the centennial of the French Revolution. <laughs> mar lago is always an option. At 324 meters tall, it was the tallest structure in the world until the construction of the Chrysler Building in 1930. So there's a little factoid. The tower was almost dismantled after the World's Fair, but was saved due to its usefulness as a radio antenna. <laughs> now there's something you learned on Quick Bite History. Live. It is one of the most visited and paid, most visited paid monuments. You have to pay to go there? In the world and a global symbol of France. They kind of snuck that into the blue there. But no, you had to pay to go there. That's right, the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower is an enduring symbol of Paris, representing both technological innovation and the romantic allure of the city. <laughs> Eiffel. It's an Eiffel. Last two, two top architectural sites in the world. This white marble mausoleum was built by Mughal Empire Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his favorite wife, his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Her name was Mumtaz Mahal. That's interesting. It is considered one of the finest examples of Mughal architecture, blending Indian, Persian, and Islamic styles. Hmm. Brad's got it. Pretty iconic, right? This is this is number two. How about you know where it was built, where it was built, or when it was built? Anybody got those those data points for me? <laughs> The central dome of the mausoleum is 73 meters high, surrounded by four minarets. There's our minarets again. It is one of the new, it's one of the new seven wonders. There you go. That's right. This is the Taj Mahal. It's not in Saudi Arabia. No. No, it's not. And, and no. <laughs> this is in India. This is Agra, India. 1632. There you go. Taj Mahal. We're down to the last one. Number one. Number one architectural wonder in the world. This massive defensive structure stretches over 13,000 miles across northern China. It was built over several dynasties starting as early as the 7th century BCE with much of the wall constructed during the Ming Dynasty. The wall was designed to protect China from invasions by nomadic tribes from the north, such as the Mongols. Those Mongols. Despite popular myths, it is not visible from space. It's not. <laughs> that's a, did you know that that's a wife's tale, a myth? The Great Wall of China is one of the most famous landmarks in the world and a symbol of Chinese strength and perseverance. Pretty good picture, right? Nice picture of it. The Great Wall of China remains an awe-inspiring feat of ancient engineering and a symbol of China's long and storied history. All right, well, thank you guys for hanging in there. I, I think we'll end the evening after that. I do appreciate you uh, hanging around and playing the game with me. Kind of a fun, little new direction. And I wore the architect's coat tonight. So we had that, we had that going for us, right? <laughs> there it is. So anyway, these were the 50 top architectural things in history. La, 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 la. Let's call it an evening and say goodnight.
Good night. <laughs> Take it easy, everybody. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Hey, watch the watch the original video. Since you already know him. <laughs>